Hi, in this video we are going to see another local hormone which is prostaglandins. So prostaglandins they were first isolated from prostatic secretion that is from the secretion from the prostate gland and that is why it was called prostaglandins right and the most common prostaglandins are PGE, PGF, PGI and so on. Okay, so there are prostaglandins are basically local hormones that was first isolated from the prostatic gland right now we'll see about the synthesis so from the membrane phospholipids phospholipase A2 will convert them to arachidonic acid and arachidonic acid by the help of enzyme cyclooxygenase converts it into PGH2 now this PGH2 can be further divided into many other prostaglandins or many other prostaglandins can be derived from this compound so these are so see here the synthase will produce uh, PGI2 which is prostacyclin the isomerase enzyme will produce PGE2, F2 alpha and D2 and the thromboxane synthase enzyme will produce thromboxane A2 so all these are the prostaglandins so remember they are produced from membrane phospholipids by the action of two enzymes phospholipase A2 and cyclooxygenase okay now thromboxane A2 can also be uh, will can also form thromboxane B2 which is another form of thromboxane so thus you can just briefly mention about the synthesis of prostaglandins and what are the most common prostaglandins that is PGE2, PGF2 alpha, PGD2, PGI2 and thromboxane A2 next we will see about the physiological actions so we will see the actions on the cardiovascular system so PGA2 and uh, PGA1 can cause peripheral arterial dilatation so you can dilate the blood vessels whereas prostacyclins that is PGI2 can produce vasodilation and what about thromboxane it can cause vasoconstriction thus we can see that each prostaglandin can have different effects on each system so remember here PGA1 and A2 cause dilatation prostacyclin vasodilation thromboxane to vasoconstriction right next we'll see the effect on hemostasis so here prostacyclin can inhibit platelet aggregation and produce vasodilation whereas just like the other case thromboxane A2 has an opposite effect it promotes platelet aggregation and causes vasoconstriction so I hope you remember the different steps of temporary hemostasis formation that is platelet addition activation and aggregation so here prostacyclin will inhibit platelet aggregation whereas thromboxane A2 will promote platelet aggregation and cause vasoconstriction okay so this is the action on hemostasis so what is the clinical implication here so we know that usually we say that having a, a clotting process is a good one but remember that this clot formation can also have negative effects for example if there's an unnecessary clot formation like this and if it goes on to obstruct the blood supply what will happen it can lead out to ischemic stroke okay so remember that thromboxane A2 can be a major factor which is promoting this plate aggregation promoting atherosclerosis and vasoconstriction later causing ischemic stroke so that is why we prescribe aspirin see aspirin is a thromboxane A2 inhibitor thus this can prevent ischemic stroke okay by uh, decreasing the formation of clot so this is the applied aspect of this action of prostaglandins on hemostasis next we'll see the use of uh, the action of prostaglandins on reproductive system so here PGE2 can be used for abortion and clinically see this is uh, example for this is misoprost so how does it cause uh, abortion see what what it does is it can cause uterine contraction and the cervix softens so what happens this fetus or the small embryo that is formed will just be expelled from the uterus just like having a heavy menstrual period this will just be expelled out of the uterus so that is how this can be used for abortion okay so PGE2 can be used for abortion next it can also be used for the delivery of the baby so PGF2 alpha can produce contraction of the gravid uterus and thus help in delivery so what is the mechanism of action here so see when we insert this uh, prostaglandin into the cervix what will happen is it will dilate it will help in softening the cervix also it will help in uterine contractions so that the baby can be expelled so that is another use of prostaglandins next it can also facilitate luteolysis it, and uh, the, it can decrease the secretion of progesterone it can also initiate the process of menstrual bleeding 
and also increase the secretion of GnRH from the hypothalamus. So these are the other effects of prostaglandins on the reproductive systems. Remember, it can be used for abortion, it can be used for delivery, it can also be used to initiate, it helps in luteolysis, initiates a process of menstrual bleeding and increases secretion of GnRH. Next, we will see the effect on the respiratory system. So here also you have got a dual effect. PGE can cause bronchodilation, whereas PGF2 alpha can cause bronchoconstriction, thereby causing bronchial asthma. So prostaglandins can have dual effects on our respiratory system. Next, we'll see about its role in inflammation. So see, prostaglandins can play a very important role in inflammation because it can increase the capillary permeability. So see, PGE and PGA can cause increase the cap increase the capillary permeability during inflammation. And moreover, it can sensitize the nerve endings to bradykinin and produce pain. So remember, prostaglandin is a main culprit behind all our pain and inflammation. So thus, we have drugs that will help us to decrease the pain. So we will see that here. So see, steroids. Remember here that here we've got the membrane phospholipase are converted to arachidonic acid by this enzyme phospholipase A2. So, steroids can be used to inhibit this prostaglandin formation and that is how steroids are used as anti-inflammatory drugs because they can inhibit prostaglandin production by inhibiting the enzyme phospholipase A2. See, remember I said that prostaglandin is the main cause of pain and inflammation. So, here we've got two classes of drugs that will help us to stop this pain. One is steroids which will inhibit this enzyme phospholipase A2 and thereby causing decreased prostaglandin synthesis. And the other is NSAIDs, that is non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, such as ibuprofen. They inhibit uh, prostaglandin synthesis by inhibiting cyclooxygenase. So thus, these are the applied aspects of prostaglandins. So here we've got a very short, quick review of uh, what the local hormone prostaglandins are. So I hope this is useful for you. Thank you.